So thank you for my invitation here. I'm very pleased to give an update of what's going on in Europe. Uh, my name is Leonardo Flores. I work in the uh, HPC and quantum technologies unit. So we got all the efforts in HPC and quantum going on together in the same section. Um, so I'm going to give an update of what is Europe doing in HPC. Uh, for many years, we have been wondering what is Europe doing, you know, and that's a lot of things that Europeans talk a lot and they do nothing, etc. So I'm, I'm going to try to give an, an, an update of what we are up to, but first an introduction of what is Europe, because in Europe, um, in 57, that's the situation we had, it's the six founding members asking, you know, the servant saying, do you want coffee? And everybody's saying, yes, thanks. And notice the kind of a situation we're dealing with, you know? So we have 28 members and everyone is asking for a different thing. Um, coffee in their different languages and maybe the UK asking for tea. So, you know, this gives a background of, that is the 28 different policies, and also in HPC we have the same situation. So we have to deal with this political environment when we have to come with our planning. So that's normally takes a little bit more when we develop our strategy. So the goals in our strategy has always been about the ecosystem. So not about the bigger machines, not about the hardware, but also having the software and especially the applications and the skills and the services you know, uh, being available for the for the user. So we had always this three-leg uh, strategy, so supporting infrastructure, so buying the best systems we can, developing technologies, and we have set since 2010, we have the program of supporting our own indigenous technology development, and of course applications. We want to keep excellence and, and leadership in applications in Europe. And of course, we are very aware of what are the developments in, in, in converging technologies, like in cloud computing, big data analytics, and recently the AI um, applications. So that's what we have in mind always when we develop our strategy. Okay, so in particular what happened since last year, last year we were expecting this to happen, now it's happening. We have <coughs> 21 plus one, so it's 22 member states, that are signing this Euro HPC declaration saying, yes, we want to develop uh, next scale uh, data and HPC infrastructure and our indigenous development of technology, and we are committed to that. So we're expecting that this Euro HPC declaration turns out into a real joint undertaking in September. Again, and it's going to be adopted on the 27th of September. So we have a huge commitment. This is what the landscape is, looks like today. And so we have praise, given uh, access and GM, given access, I mean, communications in the infrastructure part. We have the ETP for HPC platform and the Big Data Value Association supporting the technologies. We have the centers of excellence in applications. There are gonna be more centers of excellence coming up this, this uh, autumn. And the new kid in the block is the European Processor Initiative. I think Jean-Marc is gonna do a presentation, uh, yes, later on, and, and so that will save me the following slides, so I will skip them. Uh, so Jean-Marc is gonna explain about the European Processor Initiative later. Is, is that a question? Yes, sorry. Yeah, that, that two slides back. Uh, you have the, the three factors, infrastructure, tech, and applications. Having done a fair amount of HPC here, I wonder what's being done to address the regulatory landscape and in particular, the difficulty of running former Warsaw Pact workloads in former NATO countries and vice versa. It's been a challenge for us, I know. Yeah, for the data, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the data, um, we, have, uh, we have a clever strategy in the HPC saying data regulatory problems is not our problem because <laughs> HPC is agnostic. So it's okay? our problem. <laughs> yeah, so it's somebody else's problem. But... <laughs> If you look at the centers of excellence, they do have to deal with this kind of problem yeah. because we have uh, the combiomet, for instance, about competition with my, uh, uh, medicine, you know, and uh, or bioexcel. Uh, so they have to, they have to, or global science. They, so they have to, they have to share. They have to get this information. They have to get this data. Um, so far, is I mean, you have to deal with 28 different regulations. Now we're becoming more or less unified in Europe. So we hope that we'll have a, a clearer framework 
for this exchanging of data, I mean, um, uh, especially the um, individual records, they have to be uh, homogeneous. I mean, the, even right. in the same country, the, what you call individual uh, or personal record is not the same, that right. doesn't have the same definition. So that we're, we're coming to a, you know, a more homogeneous situation. But again, you know, that's what we're saying is not, our, we have the GDPR now and, and okay, the, the regulation. So it's, it's, it's becoming clearer, but it's not as open as the more of a, a lot of industry would like to have, you know, that completely, you know, exchange between countries. That is not going to be possible. And specifically the storage, the storage will have to be in Europe. So there will be a lot of uh, law saying you cannot store this information overseas. Thank you. Okay, so now EuroHPC, that is the joint undertaking, that is a common effort of member states to uh, implement the strategy, okay? So it's a joint undertaking, so it's a, it's a legal entity that will gather uh, the efforts and the uh, national funding and the European funding to implement the strategy. Okay, now, what is the mission? We have uh, the overall mission of having this integrated world-class supercomputing and data infrastructure and the, uh, support the ecosystem. And the overall objective, so in the long run, we have the infrastructure, okay? So it's two pre x scale in the short term, two, three beta scale also by 2020. So it's like we also support uh, smaller systems in some of the countries that cannot afford to have or don't have the, 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 the knowledge to support these pre x scale systems. Exascale in 2022, 2023, we're expecting two exascale systems by that time, that time, one with European technology at least, and to support post exascale infrastructure by 2027. So it means that at least one or two post exascale, what we call post exascale, I mean in the second wave of exascale systems by that time. That's a very important objective, the federation of the infrastructure, because we have 27, in shortly, member states that will want to contribute with their infrastructure and, and, and federate it. And also we will support the hybrid HPC quantum infrastructure, because many supercomputer centers are already investing in the uh, quantum, uh, quantum simulators and in the future quantum computers, so how this integrates with the HPC uh, infrastructure. On the research and innovation, we will have the European uh, agenda to support, in, in particular, the independent uh, technology supply, the, ex, uh, the applications and use, and the competence centers. I'll talk about a little bit uh, later about the competence centers. So from these um, three pillars, we have come to, for budgetary reasons, to two pillars, okay? But it's, it's the same, huh? it's infrastructures, and then here we have the technology and applications. Okay, so on the governance, who's going to be in this joint undertaking? So we have the member states and the European Commission as providing the funding and making the decisions on this funding. We have an executive director, so in, in charge, it's staff with uh, providing the daily um, support. And we have one board that is composed of two groups, which is the infrastructure, so we'll provide the input, what kind of infrastructure we want to uh, support in the, in, in the future and another group of the research and innovation about what kind of technologies, what kind of application we should support. And this is where we have the uh, associations. We have the ETP for HPC associations on the HPC vendors and technology developers and the Big Data Value Association for the Big Data Applications. So we have a, this is kind of like the, 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 the very simplified view of the governance that is gonna make decisions on the, on the funding. So on the funding, now, we are running in the current funding scenario, we have the budget until 2020. Until 2020, we have European funds up to 486 million that will be matched by participating in states. So we'll have more or less one billion to spend in the next two years. The private members will mobilize, we expect that they will mobilize in-kind contributions of around 400 million euros. And this money, will go to, as I said, two pre scale systems and several, maybe two, three petascale systems and to support, uh, in particular, the, the development of the uh, indigenous processor and some competence centers. So this is 
What is the split between these two? We don't know, but because this has to be decided uh, by the member states. But we expect that for the infrastructures, these two petascales we are uh, estimating that each system will be around 125 million euros of acquisition uh, acquisition price. Huh? So is the and the petascale system will be around 20, 30 million euros each. So that will go this that much budget will go to the infrastructure and operations and the rest will go to the research and innovation. So this is more or less the planning we have for the, uh, as I say, the efforts. Huh? What will be the efforts? So the first and one of the most important is the uh, effort on the HPC processor technologies on the, on the processor and the accelerator. And we expect that we will be some integration and, and this technology will be integrated and ready by 2021, but I think Jean-Marc will give us some maybe more details on that. Another integration, so we have by 2023 this technology integrated and ready to be used in system by 2023. This again, we hope so. So our effort, as I said, in procurement will be two pre scale, two three beta systems in the 2020-2021 and two exascale, one with EU technology in 2022-2023. Okay, so all, all our efforts will be devoted to that. I mean, we are aiming at, uh, of course, the competence centers and the, and the widening of HPC will be continuous, but everything we'll do on applications, hardware and software, and the integration effort will be uh, especially dedicated towards this, this major milestone. Um, this will collect from the, all the research and innovation that we have done in the past. But 1920 uh, will, in, will converge here in that, in that big milestone. Okay, so where are we now? So this is what will look like in the next few years. So we have uh, two working groups telling us what are, will be the user requirements and specs of, the, of these machines that we're gonna uh, uh, acquire in the next two years, and a working group saying, okay, what is the timeline, what is the, what is the, uh, the procurement that we should use to uh, select these machines. We are setting up the governance, of course, so as I said, the, this joint undertaking will be established in September and will be operational in November already. So we'll start making decisions in November. And we'll have prepared a couple of um, calls in research and innovation, but the major, the major uh, task of this joint undertaking will be to prepare the procurement. So it's gonna be a very interesting year for, for the vendors and everything because the market consultation will happen either at the end of the 18 or the beginning of 19. So we can select which hosting entities will host these pre scale machines, uh, will award this to, uh, this is not very precise, it's just to give an idea of what, uh, what we expect in, in each year. So we'll have a hosting agreement, so we'll have the joint undertaking will not host, we will not build new supercomputing centers. These machines will be hosted by uh, existing supercomputing centers. We'll have two pre scale and several peta scale. So we'll sign these hosting agreements with these uh, supercomputing centers, and then we'll launch, they'll launch the call for tenders, and by 2020, we will have the tender awarded, and then uh, we'll have the installation and acceptance and operation around 2021. So this is a very aggressive uh, time scale, but uh, we're confident that we'll make it. So what is the outlook for the next uh, period is 2021, 2027. So this is the main, uh, the main framework of finances of the European Union. HPC is part of this, of this uh, effort. So we have two programs that will be supporting uh, the uh, HPC in 2021, 2027, which is good. We, in the past, we have pro four programs, so we're getting better at that. So, as I say, there are, uh, these are the long-term goals. So, two exascale, post-exascale infrastructure, 2027, federation, hybrid HPC computing. We also consider emerging computing architectures, uh, like quantum and neuromorphic, so start integrating that into the HPC mainstream. Uh, we also pay a lot of attention to novel applications, in particular the synergies with cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. We have some centers of competence in all member states, and this is, is going to be a, one of the biggest efforts we will have in uh, advanced, supporting advanced digital skills development. Now, 
So this is the budget uh, forecast. This is the proposal of the Commission, uh, as maybe the Brexit uh, will impact. Uh, one of the major impacts will be the reducing the budget in all progress, not all of 4HPC, but maybe not. Uh, we'll see, because that's... Um, so we'll have for sure 2.7 billion for HPC, I mean for sure in the proposal. We'll, I'm not sure we'll get them. But we're, this is the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, sub-program in the Digital Europe program. Digital Europe is the first time that the European Commission is putting money in one program that is de dedicated to digital. Okay? Digital is transformation and uh, digital skills. But it's about cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and HPC. These are the main three pillars, okay? And the biggest pillar is HPC. So we expect also to have a lot of uh, input also from the advanced digital skills to support HPC uh, skills. The other program is uh, from the 100 billion euros, now we have eight, uh, 80 uh, billion euros for research and innovation, which is called Horizon 2020. In the future, we have the Horizon Europe, which is going to be hopefully increase uh, uh, to 100 billion euros. And there is one pillar on digital and industry in which advanced computing and big data is, is going to draw the money to support the research and innovation for HPC. Okay, so these are the two uh, main sources, and this is the competence centers. Member states are very interested in this. I mean, many member states are not interested in the, in the processor. They're not interested in the uh, big pre-exascale or exascale systems, but they're very interested in applications and how they can, they can uh, uh, make their industry you know, much more uh, knowledgeable of HPC and, and on advanced digital skills. So, one per member states, that's our goal. So all member states will have at least one competence center. So we can have on-demand services, I mean, HPC on the cloud and, and things like that. Um, and having uh, not only for researchers and industry, but also for the public service. So they're very interested in using uh, uh, AI base, for instance, for uh, public services. So access to the innovation ecosystem, not only about time uh, to supercomputers, but also knowledge. Uh, so we have skilled technical experts giving this, uh, this support. We'll have training and outreach activities. And of course, networking, uh, because we will have to coordinate these 28 or more competence centers across Europe. So this is one of the most interesting things that is going to happen in the next few years. So now this is I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Again, as I say, in the digital Europe, the three main pillars will be cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and HPC. And we want to have a big convergence of these three pillars because we will have competence centers in member states. We have a competence network of cybersecurity with a cybersecurity research and competence center as well. I mean, it will be one dedicated to cybersecurity. And the digital innovation hubs that I haven't talked about, but this is like, uh, okay, getting IT, uh, to member states, they're going to be reinforced with uh, artificial intelligence applications. So they're in all member states, they will have to have to support this kind of application. So the HPT competence centers will provide support to these cybersecurity and artificial intelligence applications. And this, as I say, this is going to happen. This is going to happen in the 21-27 frame. So that's my end of the talk. So thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, it wasn't your slide, but Bob showed Europe spending two to three X of any other entity on the four that are working on Exascale. A, do you agree with that? Does that represent reality? And B, why, are you, why do you have to spend three times as much to get the same thing? Your total. Yeah. So okay. It's the same. It's apples and apples. So. Four. The U.S. numbers were per year, and the EU was total of five. Yeah. So let me. So let that, me that, that chart needs to be amended then, because that's that's misleading as hell. Sorry. The EU gives their numbers in, in numbers, <laughs> so we're not in a position to infer that they would divide by five years, and that's your budget. That's rules of rich. We'll take the action and the second goal to show a yearly spend. 
We'll take the action to update that chart with two bullets. So one will show an average yearly spend and one will show a total for Exascale. Because we have the same issue in Japan, actually, because when you say they're not apples to apples, they're four different fruits <laughs> in the four quads right now is the way it is. So uh, we'll take the action to put two bullets where it'll have uh, our estimated total spin for Exascale, including pre-Exascale and all the other stuff, and then we'll divide it by the period of time that we think each one's doing it. And on that part, because you're absolutely right, there are multiple fruits in the chart right now. Okay, so let me let me just explain a little bit. Um, this is the the outlook. Um, if you if you think what happening, uh, what's happening in 1920, we have 486 million from the EU, matched by 486 million by the member states. Okay, this is going to happen. It's similar to what's going to happen with this 2.7. So we expect that this will be matched, and they will be the, uh, split for these seven years. Now, on the exascale, so we're estimating, as I said, two exascale systems by 2022, 2023, estimated acquisition of 250, 300 million euros. Okay, so it will be, uh, this will be funded by member states and the European Union, and one post exascale in 2026, 2027. So this is, uh, is, is difficult. I mean, this is the base, the basis, the basic figures. But um, as I say, this we expect that is going to be double because the member states will put as much there. This maybe not, and the uh, research and innovation maybe not. So we're expecting. I mean, the figures that were shown this morning, they are right. Is around five billion, you know, in the order of five billion euros huh? uh, for the 2021-2027. It's a bit difficult, it's just not to enter into details, but for a specific, if your question is a specific for exascale, how much? So, as I say, 2022-2023, two exascale machines, one with your technology and one post-exascale a bit later, you know, in 2026, that we estimate to be roughly, again, 300, 250, 300 million euros acquisition time, uh, acquisition price. Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, uh, one is um, hardware, software stuff. Like, are you thinking, is this going to be co-designed from the start, from the inception? There always seems to be kind of a material lag on the software side that becomes sort of catch up fast and yeah. you always have this gap. So that's the first question. Yes. The second question is on global aspirations in terms of the infrastructure and the indigenous processor. I mean, is there an expectation that Europe is going to build competency and then begin to build their own sort of global supply chain? Or is this really just for the European marketplace, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And I do have a third one, third. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, which is, um, you know, you have, you know, you have the, this incredible, in, extraordinary initiatives here. How does that line up with the global hyperscale players, right? So do you see, synergies going forward with the likes of, you know, sort of, you know, global Google and Amazon. And so where do they tie back into some of these, particularly on the cyber side, into these initiatives? Those are my three. Okay. Thanks. So the first one, the co-design, co my, my answer is yes. I mean, Jean-Marc will give a much better explanation because he's in charge of the European process and how it's going to be designed. Our intention was always to be co-designed because applications for us is key. Okay? As I said, this was never about ha having the biggest machines. Uh, it was to have indigenous technology, but to keep the leadership in applications. So um, on the second, the, again, the question was not about having a processor, indigenous processor. Uh, well, the first was a ge geopolitical reason. Okay? We knew back a few years ago that we, need, we needed an independent source of technology. And uh, it's about the market as well. So we are having in the design in mind not only the HPC, the Formula One, but in particular the automotive. Okay, so there is a market in, in Europe. There's a huge market, not only in automotive, but also the uh, I would say the embedded systems in which Europe is very strong. You have Germany, uh, Italy, France. They are big producers of that kind of system. They will be very eager to implement, to take this HPC technology, low power HPC technology, and implement them in their, in their. So the, 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 the goal is not the HPC market, it's the larger, uh, so it's to be more 
of a commercial success in the other market. So maybe yeah, Mark will. But but we are in the, in the EPI. This the automotive uh, industry is present. So they will have generations of CPUs for the automotive. Uh, so that's that's a, a, a first start. But he will explain later. And the third is about the uh, the yeah the global strategy. I can say because the, the market is always ahead of us. I mean, whatever we say here about the Googles and uh, whatever is going to happen, they will be smarter and faster than us. So um, on artificial intelligence, there's a lot of interest. Uh, my uh, personal view is that the key will be on the data, okay? so that the data is going to determine what's going to happen, because without data, there's nothing, there's no business, there's, um, you can have clever applications. So uh, we're not thinking about, we're a bit expecting what's going to happen to see what, if we can have some kind of global collaborations but uh, with these big corporations, but uh, you know, so they're, 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 sorry, excuse me? Today they're not part of your executive steering committees. No, things. no, no. We, in, the, in the platforms we have uh, like the IBMs, uh, I mean, the NVIDIA, uh, no, NVIDIA is not there, but I think it's Intel from the US. Uh, we have Fujitsu from Japan, so it's vendors. Uh, of course, we have the European vendors. So we have, and the Big Data Value Association is about, uh, is more uh, like telephone, for example, Telefonica, SAP, and things like that. So, and so, but we don't have the Googles, no. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.